So the driving force behind the Housing, Jobs, and Sustainable Communities Act uh, was things that I saw while I was Secretary of State, even things I saw while I was on the Council of the Cherokee Nation some years ago and heard from council members, which is we have a, a situation uh, across the Cherokee Nation where we have a lot of elders that need help on their homes. Uh, just things that many people take for granted, a, a roof not falling in on them or leaking, floors not caving in, uh, adequate uh, water and other systems in their homes. Um, it seems to me that Cherokee Nation has the resources to solve these problems. We just need to bring more resources to bear to do it. We have a housing authority that's considered uh, one of the best, if need not the best in the nation. Uh, we were using federal dollars to fix elders' homes and the demand simply outstripped the supply. And with so many things, if we wait around for the federal government to live up to its obligations, we're gonna be waiting a long time. We're the Cherokee Nation, we don't wait. And so I went to the Housing Authority and I said, in three years, how can we clear this backlog? And we came up with roughly uh, $22.5 million would, would eliminate this backlog. That's good for the elders, but it's also good good for the families uh, and often an elder's home is the center place for family life. Uh, it'll strengthen communities, it'll put people to work building these homes and so that was the impetus there as I felt like we had the resources to make a difference in this program we had to dramatically expand it. And the other component of that is community building so whether it's elders, young people, people of any age in so many of our communities one of the center places for community life is our community buildings and we built a lot of them over the decades. A lot of them are aging. A lot of them have uh, issues with energy efficiency. A lot of them are places where you could have great opportunities to do things like solar power. A lot of them are in locations where Wi-Fi connectivity is not great. But one thing they all have in common is they have great Cherokee people with passion and ideas and they want to make those facilities uh, great. The Housing Authority, of course, already is a turnkey operation, if you will. They already have the program in place to do it. Now they can do more, and so they're already doing more. They're already using these dollars that council appropriated to fix the homes of elders that otherwise wouldn't be fixed. And we're gonna be going out over the course of the next year, checking on these things and, and celebrating with the families. We're gonna measure our success too. We wanna to make sure that we hit our mark because it's very important to me, and I know the council, that these dollars that we're bringing to bear that belong to the Cherokee people are spent well and we clear that backlog but we are off to a very good start and with respect to community buildings we just had a gathering in Tahlequah uh, a few weeks ago in which community organizers came to Tahlequah and we told them about this new grant program for the sustainability piece of the legislation to make sure that they have opportunities to fix up their community buildings we're also sending out uh, people uh, that are experts you know, on our staff in terms of building maintenance and repair and improvement they're going to go assess all of of our community buildings and they're going to give recommendations about what needs to be fixed in these buildings. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, with uh, solar companies about ways that we can in the most cost-effective manner bring solar power to some of these community buildings um, but more than anything I think what we've done is we spark some excitement in the communities because the communities want to make these buildings the centerpiece of their uh, of their areas and I think these dollars can make uh, that possible. You know, on the housing side, I want to make sure in the short, short term that we meet our mark and in three years we eliminate the backlog. We also have to plan for the future for this program. You know, these dollars were designed to eliminate a backlog that has built up over the years. And we had elders waiting for years and years for help, uh, not because of a lack of, of, of passion on the part of the Housing Authority, but just a lack of resources. So I think uh, my challenge and the council's challenge is to make sure we structure this program in a way that is sustainable for decades to come. That'll be one measure of our success, eliminating the backlog and structuring this housing rehab program that's sustainable. With respect to community buildings, I think that we we ought to be able to go across the Cherokee Nation in about three years and every community building you go into you will see some noticeable improvement in how that building operates that energy bills will be lower that in some cases there'll be solar panels on the roof uh, that there'll be uh, new insulation in the building uh, that there'll be energy efficient appliances and the thing that I think is uh, exciting to me 
that some of these projects where we have kids that use these buildings, we can take the opportunity to teach kids about sustainability. Even it's, if it's something as simple as a community garden and growing food, or even if it's something as complex as a solar panel, this is an opportunity to use these buildings to teach kids about their future and how to have a sustainable future. That's important for the Cherokee people, and as I say, it's important for people all over the world.